All right, so we're going to bring up uh, guys of slides here. And, uh, oh, yeah, I know that. Yeah. This will be the first time that we've used some uh, actual hands on demonstration kinds of things, too. So we'll try to try to integrate that well for people online. I know it's easy for us to uh, We'll try to do the best we can. Here. So, okay. Um, let me introduce Guy. So, as I said earlier, I've been trying to get this guy for most of the year because he's got such a craft and a skill. He's one of the, I would say, he's one of the best. Um, DC area certainly uh, amateur telescope makers a lot of skill he's been doing this for a couple of decades he teaches it um, it's his trade craft um, super guy he's uh, a graduate of Dartmouth College um, of Maryland there you go <laughs> and uh, he spent like 30 years teaching right in the public DC public school so amazing you know dedication to that profession um, and he's doing spectacular things now. Retired president of the uh, 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 Astronomical Society, the National National Astronomical Capital. Uh, and and uh, that's because I couldn't get anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's sort of like here. <laughs> but uh, guys, yeah, terrific like to have you here. Uh, we're all excited to see what you've got and hear about your experience. Um, so thank you so much. Okay. Uh, if you have questions online, I think we can just take them as you as you have them. So uh, uh, appreciate it, Guy, and we'll turn it over to you. Okay, thanks. Um, and I think you all noticed uh, Steve back there at the in fact the word telescope. Anybody know who this guy is? John Dobson. That's right. Uh, 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 next slide. And uh, this fellow you know, had quite an impact on amateur astronomy. <laughs> and yeah. uh, next slide. And yeah, not me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so continue. All right, so because back when, um, you know, we, we have one of these, I think the, I'm not sure which which model of those, we've got something like that sitting in our um, um, location where we do our classes at the Chevy Chase Community Center. And uh, you see the prices here, they go from 250 up to five. 20 for the six inch model. But uh, keep in mind, this is April 1975. So I looked up the inflation schedule. So you have to have multiply that by about five and a half times. So you know, you're know you talking about a couple of thousand dollars or something like that, right? And uh, my very first car I bought in that year, uh, it was a real piece of junk and it cost me 200 bucks. <laughs> so you know, keep that in mind. Next, next slide. And uh, so, you know, an eight inch would cost you roughly you know, three thousand dollars. Would you pay three thousand dollars for that today? <laughs> I don't. I doubt. Right. Next slide. So, if you weren't wealthy back then, uh, you had to uh, make your own. Now, this guy here, um, Bob Bolster, he built that entire thing himself. Uh, you know, that did all the welding, did all the machining, this right ascension wheel, and all that in here. Um, plus the, the barbells. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't buy them online, but that wasn't invented back then. But uh, it was an amazing piece of work, and unfortunately, it didn't work all that great. Uh, and toward the end, since the gears were like a sixteenth of an inch thick, they stopped measuring our part, mm -hmm. and he never was able to fix it. Next slide. So that little thing would be about 9,000. Next slide. Mm -hmm. And this little piece of junk, this would be about $150. <laughs> Next one. And uh, so this is Coulter's uh, telescope mirror list. So for an 8 inch F7 mirror up there, that would be roughly $385 today. And I certainly looked online preparing for this, looking at prices on, you know, granted this is uh, not new stuff, this is new stuff, but, uh, you know, you can get things, you know, a good eight inch mirror for uh, 100 or two or three, depending on uh, the quality of the maker today. Next study. And uh, back then, Coulter, Odyssey 
uh, they made a number of very crude, uh, relatively cheap Dobson telescopes using Dobson's model. Uh, they were their mirrors were sort of famous for being undercorrected back then, uh, but that would be one thousand four hundred forty dollars for a thirteen-inch mirror alone. If you wanted a seventeen-inch, would be uh, two grand. Next slide. So I think telescopes today are actually better, cheaper, uh, nicer quality, and better buy than ever. Next slide. Uh, so to compare this talk, I began looking through the NCA archives, and this is from 1960, and they were talking about all the places that the uh, uh, telescope making class had been. Next slide. And next slide. So, so at one point, there were so many people running telescope mirrors back in the 60s that they had to have spillover. So there were classes of McLean High School in Virginia and uh, Ladensburg High School in Maryland. And for a while, a uh, woman, Irene Werthenholm, I never met, uh, was in charge of doing that. About the time I was born, a uh, long time ago. Next slide. And uh, there, the, the mounts that you would see from back then by today's standard, you know, they basically take some wood screws and a and two by four, and you try to get them at the right angle. Um, next slide. So this would be the height of precision when they're using an old uh, uh, automobile uh, transmission. Uh, and they, they could do it. Next slide. Uh, and so I was looking through this, and I was looking at the Constitution and so on, and what they were changing. And I thought this would be boring. Go ahead, next slide. And I noticed, oh, <laughs> no, no, no. Caucasians, only Caucasians over 16 would be eligible for membership. And they proposed, okay, they're going to really lighten it up and they're going to only exclude the back, back race. Oh, oh, wow. wow. Okay, yeah. so this was in 1970. Yeah. Uh, wow. I forgot. Wait, back up? Yeah, up? Was yeah back up one. 47, 47, 47. And so they changed it so that she didn't have to be Caucasian, but she couldn't be from Africa. Africa. And nobody checked it as far as I can tell. It really says something. Next, next slide. So at no point did anybody, except until recently, uh, actually object to it. I did talk to a couple of other people who said, well, I'm assistant here at the time, but they didn't object. Next slide. Uh, so I don't know who was responsible for that. Um, I did talk to some people, but yeah, there were some real serious races back in NCA at that time, but we don't know. Next slide. And the irony is this guy, George Carruthers, anybody know him? Uh, brilliant fellow. Uh, I got to know him a little bit at Naval Research Lab when I was working there a couple of summers as a teacher intern. I was, got to work on uh, gamma spray astronomy with some uh, early uh, mock ups, actually, not mock ups, real models that they were going to test out for what became uh, in the, yeah, the Fermi gamma ray on uh, a larger area telescope. So uh, he would not have been able to join back then, or even the year before he gave his talk. Next slide. So the next slide. Uh, so this is high school that the NCA's uh, telescope making classes are. Some of those you may know, some of those you may not. Know. <clears throat> and we're thinking, as far as I can tell, they were all segregated schools. Again. Next, next slide. Now this is my predecessor, Jerry Straw, and this is our telescope uh, aluminizing chamber. Uh, it can take up to 12 and a half inch. Uh, Mirrors. So if you have one up to 12 and a half, it will cost you a whole lot less here than if you send it or take it to um, Majestic Coatings. And for a 16 inch out there, I think they want about $400. And um, I'll talk to you about silvering a little bit. We, we chart you know, fitness. But of course, we don't do the overcoating because that requires very, very uh, precision measuring, uh, which I can't do. 
getting the right amount of magnesium oxide. So getting a nice uh, aluminized surface is actually pretty easy with the 1967 uh, surplus equipment we have there. They come out really, really nice. And yes, they only last five years as opposed to 20 years, but okay. For 30 bucks, that's not bad. <laughs> 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 okay, and uh, talk about telescope making. This this observatory, which I'm also now the president of, because why? If we couldn't find anybody else, uh, this was made by um, mostly by NCA members who are amateur telescope makers. So this this telescope here is the of the TV made by the guy who's on the floor in the other room. That's a more modern telescope, uh, Schmidt Castor. Um, and so all of that, all the welding, all the masonry, and everybody else was done by the original members. And we have today quite a few. I don't know. Uh, folks who are online, if you could mute yourself, please. Yeah, and there, there are a number of people who right now, or recently have, have built their own observatories. I was looking at uh, a series by Kevin Quinn on making his um, stackyard. Uh, I think he called it the doghouse of the territory at one point or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Bob Parks is building one out in West Virginia. That's a lot of work. A lot of work, especially when you don't have running water to pour all the concrete. So that's then mm -hmm. I wasn't one of them continued. And that is bringing in, I think, a 70 inch, no, 40 inch mirror. Uh, that was quite an enterprise. The, the roof itself is the crane. Mm -hmm. Next slide. And uh, this guy, he was he was one of the founders. This is Bob Crackton. He did a lot of work with for the DOD and, and NASA. And so this guy is still with us. He's still one of the members. And we are still working on that column. <laughs> <laughs> That something that in the woods exposed to the elements when paint does peel off. It looks a lot nicer now, though. <laughs> Next slide. And this is uh, the right Newtonian that Holster uh, made. It's got a corrector plate up here, which is somewhat like the one for uh, a Schmidt cast frame, but different prescription. And uh, back here, this is the elliptical. Rather than uh, circle on a spectacular thing, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So this is very complicated, and it ended up later on with a uh, covering that looked very much like the uh, Spirit of St. Louis airplane. <laughs> 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 and he also made this telescope here, which is a Maxis. Uh, um, made recognize that from the curvature there. Quite an accomplishment on that. Next slide. And this is one of the pictures he took of either Shiakutaki or you know, Bob. That's, that's, that's how you could talk. About. And it might have actually just been a 35 millimeter camera up, up there. Uh, film, of course, <laughs> and sensitized and in the hot oven and all that kind of stuff. No, 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 no pixels on this. Next slide. And uh, this was the copy of Stardust, and we did this with, I think it, well, it says 9.5 inch. I don't know if it was that one or not, but you notice that with film, uh, he's able to get quite a bit of nebulosity in this triad film for 60 minutes. Of course, with a single exposure, if anything flies through there, start over again, right? So, next slide. And uh, let's see, what do we have here? Um, yeah, so this is the, the same um, aluminizer. And this is one of the testers uh, that we sometimes use. I've stopped using this one. And this is somebody uh, finding it here. Next slide. And uh, so uh, this is not exactly over. But this was the type of what I would consider a high-end major project uh, back in the 60s. 
Uh, this thing is a 10 inch F9. So that's <clears> 90, <throat> almost 100 inches long. Uh, I don't think I, I can quite reach it. And this is some serious uh, heavy duty plumbing stuff. This thing alone costs weighs nearly 100 pounds. Uh, we decided to scrap that and sell it, sell it to scrap this kind of fact. Next slide. And then put it on a Dobsonian now, but you know, it's still, <laughs> it takes four people to pick it up and put it on the mount. <laughs> so there is a disadvantage in having on local night units. Next slide. Now this is an interesting thing. This was uh, tin welded, I, I think. Uh, those are something like titanium or aluminum rods, and that was all made into a nice little truss like that by somebody a long time ago, and they just said, I'm not going to finish this, go here, have it. And he was eating around his own mirror and said, hey, can I use that? I said, sure. <laughs> go ahead. Take it. Next slide. And uh, we have some kids who, who make telescopes. These are two brothers who live in. Uh, they're in some high tech college, I forget which one, but they, they did a really nice job. And they also did this sort of a, a study when you do this sort of thing, when do you get the, the evil turned edge? And they were able to uh, get some results of that and present that to science fair. Next slide. And uh, so this one here is over at the um, telescope making class that they have in. Uh, Oakland, California, at the Oakland Science Center called Chabot, and they've been doing that for uh, quite a few years. Every Friday, they would have classes, and this was um, that. That seems to fit. Um, and this is at a maker fair thing, uh, not too far from here. And these are two youngsters who are trying to figure out uh, a testing machine. And notice how crude this is. This is this is parts from a chair, and he does actually a pretty good job of uh, of doing a romp key test, not a Pugo test, a romp key test. Next slide. And one of the things I also do is, uh, or actually, I don't do this anymore, but apart from that, was a um, program that was called First Light. It was for middle school students in DC, uh, free, and they made a bunch of telescopes. As you can see, it's you know, kind of similar. And uh, they also made little refractors. Those that got to keep and take home, uh, that one, uh, the, the four or five, I forget which, uh, still belongs to the uh, part of the institution. They keep it at the broad branch, but it's this one. And some of the work that people do is very, very nice, beautiful job. By, uh, and uh, this is something you could have sitting in your living room and not be ashamed of it at all. That one looks like in your living room. Next slide. And th here's another one. Notice we used curved veins here and strings. Not quite sure. Maybe that's to prevent vibration, but this is all, as you can see, this is all handmade by him. Uh, and you could mirror in our shop that you could do. Metal work on its own, and uh, whether there's, I don't know really how, you know, whether there's parallelable or problem or not. I remember, Alan, you had told me about the uh, a different telescope, the, the, the John Avalon's thing it didn't have cross bracing, it, so it tended to do this sort of thing. Yeah, I don't know about this one. Next slide. And this looks like a cobra tube, and they put it on a better, better mirror. Um, I haven't heard much from dead people. He did fantastic job. Look, look at the tube here. But got some sort of a film coating that means the station at the moment. You apply that, and everything is just just a beautiful job. Anybody heard from him recently? I'm not going to know. Um, next slide. And uh, so this young lady, 
salvage this tube, somebody else was making it in the end of the project, and she finished that, participated in one of those uh, astronomy and festivals on the mall. Anybody else participate in one of those things on the mall? Mm. Yeah, it's a great place to observe from, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you look at the top of the Washington Monument, you see the little triangle, and you can look at the top of Capitol. And yeah, let's see, this one lady made a very nice telescope as well. And back here, you see that those stripes? Those are different types of uh, chalk called hardwoods. And the guy has made this nice mirror, but he tends to make lots and lots of projects. Starts lots and lots of projects. <laughs> he doesn't always finish it. But he's not really good at what we get. And this is my very first scope. This is its third incarnation of it. Uh, first time is just uh, a square tube job that I got from um, Richard Gary's first book on how to make a telescope, and it was great. And then I wanted to go down to the South America for the 1994 eclipse in uh, Chile, and then postage alone or, uh, would cost a yen. So I made it so it was transportable. And this time I made it much more transportable and it worked great. Next slide. And the beacon company is We have this little polishing tent. Uh, and that turned out to be a really, really good idea. You may not be able to see it, but over them is a, uh, uh, one of those canopies that you buy for. Uh, <coughs> And I want to sit outside and I give you five bugs. And, and I placed it in a uh, wood shop for 30 years. You can imagine there's lots of hot dust. <laughs> and so when we started doing this, people stopped having scratches on the ear. Next one. And uh, this is he's, he's a great this puzzle. <laughs> so, you know, it, it ended up being very nice. And this is one that I rescued. The tube was, tube was great, the, the, the telescope was great. Uh, this is a very interesting uh, military surplus um, finder, not finder, it was a, I think, an artillery site. And can you guess what that is? A big gas pipe of some ice. And I can tell us. Next one. And, uh, that, this is for a six inch F 2.88 telescope. You'll see some pictures of it in a little bit. And uh, F 2. Point, well, almost three, he's really, really short. And he was saying that you have to collimate just so. If it's not collimated properly, then all the stars are blurred. But if you get it collimated perfectly and the conditions are right there, it's good. The wide chain views are fantastic. And, uh, he just finished refiguring his 17 inch, I think it was a Coulter mirror. It was under correct the light most of the month. And he did it on a machine that you're going to see in a little bit. And he's quite the mirror in telescope. But take that back. Telescope maker, he likes to have other people uh, do the optics for the most part, but sending one of these off to be refigured by one of the professionals. That is not cheap. Of course it's cheap. Very skilled. Next slide. Oh. So that's a six point uh, support for this little man. Next slide. So uh, yeah, what's, what's going on? And so he recently finished the whole thing. This is right before the, um, was it 2019 when we started having the, uh, yeah, so right before um, everything really got shot down, he just finished the year and then they had to stop and after things opened up again, finished the rest of it. You can get to see some pictures of it. Continue, next slide. And one of the things I like to do is, as, a, as teachers to do hands-on stuff, with math, I thought math. Um, and what they're doing, I think, is getting ready to measure the uh, size of the Earth. 
it is one thing to have students doing the classes, but the geometry classes. Have you heard of Eratosthenes' experiment? Well, they looked at it. Yeah, we got data from other schools who are north and to our south and, and looked on the map and figure out what that is north south distance and you know, a little bit of ratios and proportions. And you see that size there. And of course, you can also just use ordinary protractor and a weight and a straw. Okay, uh, next slide. And more people making telescopes in our workshop. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, this young lady was a lot younger when she first made this telescope. She was like, I think, 10 or so. And uh, it's a doll. And uh, they are really nice. And, uh, you can't tell, but it's not you know, pretty nice. Next slide. And this is a one day I workshop that I did in Dathan's group for kids to make their own little refractors. And the idea is you take the, I don't know if you can tell the different parts of the PVC uh, couplings and tubes. And I cut four of them. And I've got some uh, surplus lamins. And these were the uh, acromats, so the two elements together. And it pulled in and out with a very fancy you know, device. These whole things like 20 bucks. So, not bad. This um, one. And again, some of, the, some of the work is absolutely beautiful. This was made by a faculty member at Georgetown. He calls it the great show after a Vatican astronomy. I made this one during the, the uh, the shut down the coronavirus up there. Here, the rounds here are from a, a drum, what do they call it? The drum cylinder? But it's that. Made a lot of holes in it to save a little bit of weight. Next one. And a little bit inside of some telescopes. Next one. And uh, so one of the things we've looked at is the uh, making a bath in the barometer. Anybody heard of the bath in the barometer? It's very inexpensive. The total bill for all the parts could be, you know, 30 bucks or something like that. The XYZ thing, that, that's more, more expensive. That's like about 100 bucks. But the idea, I should have had a diagram, is you go. Laser beam comes in, half of it bounces off and goes on one path and comes back and interferes with another one, comes back in the other direction. And then you have some algorithm which uh, deciphers that and figures out, you know, a 3D uh, map of your whole mirror, which is pretty neat. I'm not very good at it, though. Next slide. And uh, so this is some of the uh, facilities we have. This is just a regular old uh, uh, Rockwell Hill Press from God knows how many years ago. And we were making the mistake of trying to trip in a piece of glass using water and the brick in ways that has been described in telescope um, making uh, journals. And it turns out it makes an enormous mess. <laughs> uh, it throws dirt and stuff all over the place. It got into the, the chuck, so I had to disassemble the chuck. And that is not easy if you've ever done it before. And clean it out and get all the stuff out. Uh, so we don't do that anymore. We don't <laughs> do that anymore. <laughs> were you trying to bore a hole to the center of it? No, what, what we're just trying to do is just try, trying to make a disc. They are roughing it out. We're just trying to make a, a glass disc and not trying to you know make a curve making a flat making a flat and it, it takes like an hour to go through it now if you've got diamonds that, that goes through in like hot night and butter but what we do now is we we you know a place that does water jet cutting and for 30 bucks <laughs> next one next one okay next slide uh 
Now, here is a machine that was also made by Bob Holstein initially. Um, and it's a copy of something called the Draper machine. I'm sorry, I don't have a really good picture of it in operation. But it has an arm that goes around like this, and another arm that goes like that, and your uh, arm that holds the tool that works on the mirror uh, does its own kind of a sort of a egg shape sort of a thing with a pointed end to it. And today's um, machine that is called the, what's it called? The uh, Miromatic is much better. Much, much better. But that's what we have in the modern market. Next slide. So this is at the Chabot Center. And this is their testing rig, which is really quite nice. They have this incredibly fine uh, wire in here. And they do a wire test. And they have obviously some very nice skilled machine that's way better than me. Uh, pretty impressive setup. They have a bunch of people working, grinding away at the glass. And uh, after their three or four hours are up, they pull up all the things and all disappear and goes back in their class again. Ours stays in this. <laughs> next, next slide. So this is, I think, all it should go. This is the underground uh, reservoir of uh, telescopes that are not currently in use that are given back to them. Which says something. It's right. So, uh, anybody know Jim Crowley? No? Okay. He, <coughs> he's made several more. And he made this really nice uh, setup. This is a uh, this is a flat with a hole in it. I mean, this is a, you know, it's being tested. Now, if it's truly a parabola, then the light that comes out right near his eye. Whichever light hits here, since this is a problem, would come back perfectly parallel to that uh, the axis. And then it would hit this <coughs> and then it would come back again, and it would hit here, and then it would come back to the focal point again. So any imperfections on the figure of this would get multiplied by two. So it's a very, very sensitive test. It's also a real pain to stay up a set up. <laughs> But if you can get it right, you know, it works nicely. Just got it on permanent loan to us. Next slide. And I made it, uh, I worked on a number of mirrors at the Del Marva Mirror Making Workshop. Who else went here? Anybody? Okay. It was not, it was fun, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a weekend, a long, very long weekend. We did nothing but do this, uh, grinding and polishing and <laughs> testing. This was, um, uh, Swayze's uh, mirror testing device. It's called the Ralph's Mirror. Ralph's Mirror. Ralph's Mirror. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <coughs> yeah. And that's the only test he uses, which is kind of interesting. I agree with the people that Chabot just had at least two tests. And uh, because you can always be wrong on one of them. Next slide. Mm -hmm. And this is sort of a panorama of a uh, uh, a workshop. We have up here a whole bunch of tubes which we got from the factory of this is. Over here we have a, a thing which has braces from the very courses up to the very finest of the factory polishing. Um, here's our polishing tent. Here's a uh, machine and basically this thing is the arm. This is some of other machines and keep it open and stuff. And this is that thing up there. Yeah, next one. This is that. Uh, this is the name that's important. But on a very cold day, after the northern man, next one. And this was a telescope that somebody donated to Oakwell. Um, it's a 14 inch uh, out as it is supposed to be motorized. And at some point, we will motorize it. Um, and I put on. <coughs> Digital setting circles so you can tell exactly what you're pointing at, which is nice, but it's not an easy thing to do. Uh, not at all. Next slide. Now, this is something I wanted to show you a little bit about. Yeah, I actually have it running right now. This is Prasad Agraha, 
he did uh, a setup called Onset. I think this is an old Vixen Mountain. I don't know if that's a Vixen. You know, whatever. He wasn't working properly anymore. So he replaced the, the drives that were in there, the motors, with uh, stepper motors. Like you know, this, that's what these are. And uh, I have here, you may notice, a bunch of wires. And uh, it took us close to a year. But what happened is that the old drive on our big telescope at the uh, uh, Hopewell Observatory, uh, the clutches died, and I couldn't get them back together again with the right material at the right pressure. It was either you know grinding all the time or it wasn't touching. I just couldn't do it. So I had heard he decided to show me about this. I said, well, let's try this. I thought it was going to be really easy. <laughs> no, <laughs> it was not easy. And uh, at, at the end, we were bailed out by person in the audience, Arlen Rash, thank you very, very much for your help uh, in figuring out that, first of all, you, if you're going to have external stepper drivers, they have to be at a different voltage, 5 volts as opposed to 3, 4, 3 and a bunch of other things. Uh, so we have this here. So let's see. This is the light ascension, and it's been slowly going that way. Supposed to turn once every 12 seconds. Let's see, can I make it go faster? No, not on that one. But you can also run it through, uh, through your, uh, uh, if you've got an uh, Android, or yeah, it has to be an Android. So if I go to, let's see, would M13 be up right now? I, I bet it would, right? So let's see. Oh, go to fail below the slide. What's up right now? Let's go back. There you go. Yeah, you get M42. M42? It doesn't like M42. But you put M27. M42 is too low. M2. M2. Yeah, I, I, I tell you what, how about Jupiter? <laughs> 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 there you go. So, <laughs> going oh, feel the breeze. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little breeze. But when it's in the telescope, you, you can really hear it. Like, oh, what these ended up being not strong enough to step in those. Uh, ones we have are much beefier and a whole lot more torque. I can easily stop these with my fingers. So, and we have much better step of drivers. And uh, Arlen, among other things, moves together uh, something to fix the voltage problem because this thing puts out 3.3 volts. Instead of five, I didn't know. I mean, it sounds simple to me now, but I really <laughs> didn't know much about this stuff. Carla, did you want to say anything about that? Well, he he, he, was, he did a lot of stuff correctly, but he was getting some bad advice from others, and knowing well, that's true, knowing what uh, going through uh, methodically was was uh, what it, what it needed, in, and uh, we did it in three days and three nights. <laughs> it was a uh, challenge, but it went from not working at all to the third day uh, or third third night. We had it uh, uh, being driven by Sky Safari on the cell phone. Yeah, cool. yeah, we, we it's all true. Right? And I I will confess to being not methodical enough and not at all focused enough <laughs> and going in too many directions. Uh, being you know lot of, lot of vision. It's still going. And of course, I can afford it. And it does a little bit of something until it finally decides to stop. Okay, so uh, this is one of the uh, things that actually can be sort of a game changer, especially if you have an older mount that has good bones, that would say has good gears, like we did. Um, an old buyer's gears. I mean, they cost a lot of money. And, uh, and if, but if your motors aren't working properly, uh, you're, you're kind of screwed. But this system, I mean, you can't tell from where you're sitting, but this not only does the right ascension and declination or azimuth and altitude if you want, but it can also rotate your camera if you like, and it can also 
control your focus energy. It can do all that stuff if you're uh, willing to do um, a lot of do-it-yourself type stuff. Definitely worthwhile looking. Next one. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. I can start over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do I have to do it word for word? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did I know what that is? <laughs> you want to know? <laughs> okay. So uh, we also build a paper focuser. Uh, and we used one of our, uh, actually two of our lathes in our milling machine to make that. Um, and a lot of it was just from scrap metal we found a few class. Next slide. And let's see, yeah, this is more of his, his creation. Next one. And most of the telescopes um, that we make, uh, we usually see graboids. And that's the nice thing about a drum sony is you only have to get one surface correct. The front surface of the graboid, and it doesn't matter if it's transparent or not. As you can see, this one has some striation. Ah, I'm still going to make a beautiful mirror. Um, and, but if you're going to do something like this, a doll Kirkham has a prolate ellipsoidal primary, meaning there was a uh, ellipsoid, and the mirror is actually right over here. That's the mirror, and it has two focal points. The nice thing about ellipsoid is any light that goes through one of the foc uh, focal points is going to bounce off the interior and go there. So we tested this by having a little tiny light on the end of a little pillow of glass that had a little bit of light coming through the bottom, LED, and then we set up our testing apparatus there, and it tested very, very nicely. Next slide. And here is the, the setup. The, uh, uh, let's see, this is the LED. Excuse me, online we're still seeing the Crayford focuser. Interesting. Right? Interesting. So, um, on up. How's that? There's no? Okay. Next slide. We're, we're seeing cast equipment now. Okay, so this is the finished finished telescope at his house. It's as you can see, it's rather short. Um, and I've actually not looked at it through through it myself. It looks like it has a uh, sort of a slow motion out as uh, now that he's made himself. Next one. And yeah. So uh, complicated scopes uh, are real complicated. So this <laughs> one was something called the Lurie Houghton. Anybody heard of that design? Well, that one has two identical composition glass pieces of glass. Unlike here, these two, this is a project I started on at some point and just abandoned. Uh, I don't, you probably think about but these are two different types of glass. You might be able to tell more that this is a different type of glass. Um, I don't remember what these things are, but if you're going to make a refractor, they have to be two different chemical mixtures because that gives them different, basically, rainbows, diffraction that they have, and they also have to have dispersion as well. And uh, that makes it very complicated because you have to have four surfaces. They all have to be pointed. And with a Dobsonian or a Newtonian jump, does it really matter if it's this long or this long? Not at all. You can make it this long or that long. It doesn't make any difference. But with a 
lenses have to spot on, and you can't have any sort of silk, and they have to be perfectly centered too. So we never did figure out what we did not work. Uh, but with regular, anybody want to push the glass? I'm going to Absolutely. All right, come on. <laughs> okay, did I, have I ever met you before? Not yet, no. Oh, okay. All right, so uh, we're going to pretend that you're polishing this, and we're going to use uh, some of this. This is number 450. And what that, by the way, and what's your name? Jonathan. Jonathan, I'm Guy. Thanks nice for volunteering. Okay, so I'm going to poke a hole in here and we're going to uh, pour out some of this stuff. This is fairly fine. I'm sure you've all been a hardware store before, but you may not have paid much attention in the, in the sandpaper aisle. But uh, in the sandpaper aisle, for your information, the little number is that's the thick stuff, the higher number is that the, has the thin stuff. Hmm. <laughs> this is not so you know, you know. There we go. Okay. So if this was just a regular uh mirror, well this is gonna be something. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someday it'll be a uh, uh a lens. I put on some some water because you don't want to breathe glass dust. Supposedly Spinoza uh Died from uh, too much glass dust. It's also called silica dust. I hold my breath. What? I hold my breath. Eh, you don't have to hold your breath. <laughs> uh, because we got it wet. Okay, so at this point, let's put a little bit of water under here to keep the whole thing from flying off the table. That's rather important. And that's it. So you just go back and forth a little bit, you rotate this a little bit, rotate that a little bit more, and you publish the more. It's that simple. How long did that take? Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good question. <laughs> Each grit, I, I usually allow roughly an hour. Uh, that's, okay, I'll turn this over to you. Thank you. Water. A little sticky? Pretty sticky. Yes. Put some more water on it. I'm trying to stay right here. Oh, yeah. So the fact that they're sticking together so well, that means that they're pretty well matched. There we go. Uh -huh. And when you're using the 60 or 80 bit, it's really loud and it's really hard <laughs> to carry out a conversation. <laughs> So now, what you've done it a few times, we'll take that, right? Uh -huh. Sweet. <laughs> and then if you get real bored, then you turn the whole thing over. Uh -huh. And you do the other way, and that sort of keeps things at the same curvature. Hmm. See, whichever one's on top is going to tend to become concave. The ones on, on the bottom is going to tend to become convex. And it really is that simple. And, and you do a lot of measure. And so let's see, you can start by 80, 60 grit, 80 grit, 120, 120, 220, 320, then 400, then 500, then 600. Then we start counting in microns uh, 25 micron, 15, 10, 5. And then we start polishing. And the polishing is using different stuff entirely. Uh, we don't use uh, glass on glass. It's a it's a pitch, and pitch is made out of various different things. Sometimes it's from trees. Sometimes it's a uh, uh, a coal tar product. Sometimes you have no idea what it is because it's a trade secret. Um, but there's lots and lots of different pitches with the with the actual. Uh, Commercial places. Are you rotating? I'm so rotating. Here you are. Yeah. And what I tell people is rotate one and then rotate the other a little bit more because you don't want them to have the same orientation with respect to each other because then you basically get the edge of a couch or that's not. 
And it does this sort of a Zen sort of a thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
like right here. Yeah. Yep. You, you also had a, a plate on the bottom of the mirror that pulled it into a parabola and tensioned it. Right. That's this. Yeah. Right. So this tensioner here, um, which I think he made out of a, a, a Ford wheel or something like that. Um, and here you see it from the side, pulls on part of it and pushes on part of it. And as uh, Pete just mentioned, pulls it into a parabola, or at least closer into a parabola. And I found that if you, you could tweak it during the observing and make it better. Mm -hmm. But it's now sort of being taken apart. What are you all going to do with the mirror itself? Trying to get it off that wheel, the epoxy. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, John. John apparently loved or invested in the epoxy manufacturing company. <laughs> all the all the aluminum strut work in the telescope was top riveted and epoxied. Wow! So the epoxy will release in high temperature and take it off in an oven. Yeah. When I go to the oven, it will turn off the but as I think you mentioned, he didn't do any cross bracing, and the thing flapped. I didn't notice it. Okay, next slide. Um, now this is not this year's, but the year before uh, um, Stella Fame, and some of the work that people do there is just unbelievably good. This this uh, refractor is just amazing. Um, don't ask me what that is. <laughs> this, that's me. Solar From my stuff compared to the stuff that people display for, uh, you know, for mechanical stuff, I, I'm always highly embarrassed. The, the stuff that they, the competitors do is just unbelievable. Maybe the next slide will show you. No, that's not. <laughs> so, so that's the I was talking about before. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Keep going forward. Okay. So this not a good one. So this is a, a BBC mirror that was made by this fellow. His name, yeah. Uh, and he's showing that to us. Uh, looks like about 16 or 18 inches. BBC's black vitrified vitri ceramic. And it was sort of a sandwich of different layers of ceramic and glass, and it was very soft and apparently figured very, very well. Um, and in fact, Jan Vishnevsky, who I think has moved away from the, this area, he made a beautiful, beautiful telescope uh, using the same stuff. Next slide. Next slide. Okay, this is kind of cute. Next slide. And uh, that's a relatively short one. I like the, the, the cradle on that. It was made by the guy on the left. His name is here. It's in his And yes, yeah, so somebody was asking about the uh, trying to make a uh, a uh, spider. And he was using, I think, a inch and a half uh, square feet. And it worked out pretty well. It's a lot of Little steps, a lot of work, uh, but it works pretty nicely. Got three uh, adjustment bolts to do it. And this is, uh, I think, an old bandsaw blade. That looks like strapping. Uh, or strapping, I, I, I don't know which. The okay, next one. And by the way, one thing about telescope making is, is that the skills are all transferable. Uh, you learn how to use a router, you, you learn how to do measurement, um, you learn statistics, you learn uh, about accuracy and cleaning up after yourself to keep your record, <laughs> <laughs> and painting, and varnishing, and uh, tapping threads. It's all transferable to other, other fields. So, um, we'll, we'll get to costs in a minute, but, uh, you know, you're learning stuff as you're you're doing this. So a lot of times you can pay a lot of money for that knowledge. Now we don't we don't charge anything for the instructions. Probably worth at least twice as much as that. As, uh, <laughs> but people spend a you know I looked up woodworkers club in Rockville and some other places, sixty dollars an hour if you want to take their classes. 
Next one. And this is that F uh, 2.88 telescope. And this is obviously a commercial Omni XL Studio. He's, he said this is the one that needs to be collimated to a T before it works. Next one. And he does the most beautiful work. This is this looks like a theoretical rocket here, but that's that's the real one. This is how we did the parabolization with a pitch lab that had the facets uh, obviously trimmed towards the center. And this is his uh, secondary holder. So that's a good one. And another big change that's come up recently, uh, and I'm, I've read about it in, in Sky Telescope, and I think elsewhere, low cost. Open air, overcoated silver with basically spray bottles or spray gum. And I'm used to using a vacuum chamber. And I'd also translated Foucault's uh, 1859 uh, article on making parabolic mirrors in the, uh, the French science journal of the day. And he talked about his process that he'd gotten from somebody else's name, I can't remember. And you're very, very complicated. You get uh, basically silver nitrate and then you reduce it and it precipitates out like what we did in our high school chemistry labs. Uh, and then he had to burnish it with the uh, chamois cloth. Well, this process, we can look at it the next slide. Um, do it in the open air and don't need dangerous hot nitric acid. And stuff like that, and so that's that's a near being coated, and most of the time it's, it's in clean. That that takes a long time. If you don't clean it properly, it doesn't come out nicely. But if you do clean it properly, and you've got the chemicals in good shape, just spray it on, and you can just see it becoming perfectly silvered and uh, reflected. And then you pour on some of this overcoating, which I have no idea what's in it. And then you just take your hand in a in a nice uh, latex glove or something, and you just use a um, cotton ball and just uh, spread it all over. And then you rinse it off, and that the distortion that you see up there is that, that's actually the tint overhead. It comes out great. Um, and I did a before and after test with. Uh, according to my lights, and also um, Peter Chen did the test also at the, at Goddard, and basically you can't tell any difference between before and after. A little, little bit of difference in the interferometry, but uh, the exact physics and chemistry of, the, of this is a little bit. But an 18-inch mirror, you could do it for like 25 bucks, as opposed to, you know, many hundreds or thousands. It's it's a game changer. Okay. And if you don't like it, you can do it again, yeah. strip it off. Right. Now this one here, that that I did this morning. I took that picture this morning. That's my wife from the reflection in it. It's it's not in the greatest shape. Now you can see here the sort of the uh, I'm not you know the, the coating actually came off there. And in in, in my basement, um, in a box, this is the box. For about a year and a half, I hadn't gotten around to putting it into the telescope. But that coating, while not great after a year and a half, uh, is certainly something, something that this was in a research grade uh, telescope. You know, people could publish quite a few uh, papers on that. And, you know, actual astronomers that, that, that like Carnegie said, yeah, you can you can get published full results from a year that's got all kinds of dust on. So I think before putting it into the telescope, I am going to be uh, resilt it uh, just because it looked better. But I was impressed. Year and a half in a basement. Next, okay. And I've talked about these. These things. 
I think this is sort of a game changer if you want to uh, make your telescope, let's say you've got an old lead or a uh, slush gone, Schmidt cast frame with a drive from the 70s or 80s, you know, it, it's not much good anymore. But if you want to spend some time, energy looking into this, you can, uh, you can have a new life on it and you can do it for something like this as well. You would have to change the bearings, of course, but you can make it go up and down, left and right, and any of the things. Next slide. Oh, this is some of the ones up at the cell thing. I mean, look at that. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> the craftsmanship. And, you know, these, these are homemade telescopes. And this one, this one was really amazing. Guy, guy from, from uh, uh, former USSR. You know how you, how you do the combination on this? You just twist these things. <laughs> you twist the struts and you know, get them into combination. And this thing here, it just put, gets, uh, I think it's a double A battery, and he's got little circuits here, and that keeps the, the secondary warm enough. And he's got tensioners to put it, keep it all in place. It's just a beautiful job. Um, like I said, when I go up there and look at stuff, I'm always embarrassed <laughs> by comparison. Next one. And oh, let's look at color. Okay, so I did a little bit of research. Um, now, this is a do it yourself plate glass kit. So, plate glass, which is cheaper than this stuff, this is actual, uh, and I think this is, yeah, Dow Corning. Pyrex made in the USA six inches. So I made all these sort of the same, they're all for eight inches. Okay, so plate glass arc, arc mirror blanking kit, and that means all of the abrasives, uh, use of the tool for you know, doing, you know, you have one tool, one mirror, and you know, lots of nuts and bolts and screws for making the thing. And the limitation is $35. This is a this is you get somebody else's mirror uh that they've already done i'm, I'm saying ballpark price of about 160 dollars now the pyrex kit if you want to make it yourself will look like the same price <laughs> and of course you don't have to do any work on that and uh you can get a used dog and i found some this week or probably next time so i'll do about 400 Four hundred bucks, or I have SkyQuest uh, new. It's about six hundred fifty. Obviously, they've done the, all the optics for you there, and you can go up to a line Skyline kit for about a thousand. Okay, next line. But there's more. <laughs> okay, so there's the labor. And I was, I would, if I did about forty hours for making it yourself, uh, the mirror that is. Uh, and if it's do this one, it's already complete. You're going to have to spend some time here and here to test it out to see if it really is any good. Um, and you need things like plywood, focuser. You now there's two different choices. You got the inexpensive rack and pinion, inch and a quarter, or you can buy a new Crayford focuser, which you, know, you can get them for about 150. A lot of these are already included in most of the choices, including the secondary mirror. We have them for 10 bucks. And we've got makings for uh, existing spiders for very little and all this stuff. And finder scope. Some of these things actually do include a finder scope, and some of them do not. This one here does not. No finder scope. Um, and you need at least two items, right? <laughs> And I'm going with cheapos. Uh, these are real cheap, 30 uh, bucks each that we have around the shop. And here's you know, a little bit better. I'll say 50 bucks. Obviously, you can pay a lot more for my pieces. How many of you spend more than 100 bucks on a live piece of the fact? Okay. Anybody spend more than 200? <laughs> Anybody spend more than 300? 
Anybody spend more than 400? <laughs> I'm not going to. <laughs> All right. Obviously, you can more than double the price of almost any of these folks with the right eye piece. So, um, and I think every telescope should have a telegraph. And I was always surprised that many of these did not include telegraph. So I added 50 bucks for a telegraph. Next slide. Okay. So, uh, now, Oh, let's talk about this. Um, so a couple of you pointed this out. What I have here is uh, an implementation of, of a setting circles. And it's a, I think, a really cool implementation. Down on the floor, I don't know if you can see this, but I got some uh, tubing at the uh, local Ace hardware store. And I uh, made it so that the it was a 360 degrees all the way going around which is harder than you might think getting it right was, was a little <laughs> tricky uh my first go wasn't was very good um it was off by a few degrees but i got it correct and this thing here uh i already had one of these and on arlen's suggestion and it's a digital uh Equinometer or clinometer, and it tells you what angle you're, you're pointing at. So let's say you want to find a uh, an object in the night sky, and you are in light field uh, anywhere in the DMV, uh, and you can't find it. And you want to see the star. How are you going to find it? You can use this, but it's difficult. One of the ways that you can do it is you can take out, you know. Whichever app you like, still in, whatever, and you say, what is the uh, widest, not the widest section, but this is an uh, out as now, so that's not going to work. You ask what the out do, what the as them. And this one, I don't know if you can tell, but this one rotates. And so when I get out there, I find something real bright, like, say, Jupiter, aim it at Jupiter, and uh, make, you know, let's say it's I have no idea. I'm just making this up. Let's say it says 102 degrees. So I turn this around so it says 102. At that mark. And then I would check this. Is it really saying 20.1 degrees? Let's say so. Okay, so yeah. Okay, I got a deal. So now I want to find something else at, I don't know, uh, 75 degrees. Just making that up. So turn that to 75 degrees, and then put this at whatever else, and you're going to be real close. And this is something I already have, but you can get them for 30 bucks. You can go to Home Depot, I think, or Lowe's and get an uh, analog one for about the same price. This stuff was, I think I spent six bucks on all of it. So it's a little bit worse. So not bad. And I could go back to the slides again. Okay, so you can do it that way for almost nothing. Where are we? A digital set. So I, I said 40 bucks because I was including this. Okay. Uh, but you can instead, if you want, they have devices that you put on the front of this. Uh, Star Sense is one such thing. And it's basically a uh, plate solver. I've not used them myself, but what they do is they point to the part of the sky and they figure out <clears throat> what part of the sky you are in. And then it says, oh, you want to see the Orion Nebula? Go this way, go that way. But that's you know, considerably more than that price wise. And that's probably going to take you an hour to get that on the working. Um, so, Grant, oh, I was also including some nice filters, uh, variable polarizing filter and the light pollution rejection filter. A little bit cheaper if you're using inch and a quarter eyepieces rather than the, the two inches. Uh, this one actually had them. I was surprised with that. So let's see who is the winner price wise so far. Uh, this one, well, if you 
like if you're cheap like me <laughs> so that's the way if you like spending a lot of money let's see uh, also tie right and you notice that's a kit so you have to build all that yourself they give you all the materials but not much of a bargain actually when you think about it why does the orion skyline kit cost more than the assemble oh the Orion, that's a different kit. They call, I don't know why they call it a kit. It's it basically has a few extras. Let's see, what are the extras? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah this one, for sure. the filters are included. Uh, there's a couple of other things they include. Next slide. But how about the labor? Okay. Uh, I just thought, well, if we're going to do the labor, uh, maybe we should use some actual objective things. So, DC, I don't know if you noticed, just voted to stop the current. Well, that's not, that's supposed to be five dollars. <laughs> 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 they are not <laughs> uh, So, that was the total labor for the do it yourself kit from our telescope making. Modification and maintenance workshop. Mm -hmm. uh, so that would be ah. over there, awesome. and labor prices for those. Some of these basically no labor at all. And so now the winner is a used telescope. Facts are facts. The loser is. Star Game Steve's kit. Interesting. I had not expected these results. I'm surprised. But still, if you want to if you want to make it yourself, uh, and you don't mind using relatively inexpensive mirrors and stuff, uh, that's the way to go. Or you want quick fix? Well, quick fix. You know, any means. <laughs> not not this one. A, B, C, D, E. You can have it in your hand within a week, I guess, right? The other ones, it's going to take a lot more time. But you definitely have more bragging rights for those. Right? <laughs> so what, what's the value uh, for the education that you can obtain while you go through Well, I didn't quite know how to do that. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that, you know, this this could be it. maybe negative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. I've, I've got another thing to add on the do it yourself part of it. You go buy one, you're stuck with what the guy thought you wanted. Mm -hmm. It takes a hell of a lot of nerve to make a hacksaw the one you bought. <laughs> but if you made it, you can always upgrade it. <clears throat> 20 point. years later, I'm still doing it. <laughs> <laughs> when did you make your first one? Uh, mid 90s. All right. And, and I'm upgrading that one right now. All right. <laughs> did you make that here in this? This neck of the woods? Uh, yeah, Fairfax, in my basement. Your basement, completely on your own. Mm -hmm. Wow, you're brave. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I broke the used one. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually going to do start this. I was going to buy the mirror and uh, make it around that using the book uh, by Richard Perry. And uh, somebody said, "No, nah, go talk to Jerry Stahl and make it here and there." I thought it was going to be a piece of crap. <laughs> but when I got done, I took it to the first little star party, and people started coming up and saying, "You know, guys, this has got the best and brightest views, the sharpest views of any, any telescope out here." Looking <laughs> around, looked at them. They were right. <laughs> that, you know, I don't know. It feels really good <laughs> yep. when. Next slide. So uh, these were some scopes, and these were sent to me recently by, uh, I think Dan Ward sent me some of these, and I, I don't remember exactly which one. These were made by, I think, his daughters, and I think we have another picture. Yeah, I think this is his family. So his, his daughters together made a total of three telescopes, and one them up at uh, uh, Stella's band, and they, they went the Stargazer uh, Steve route. Now, the one in the back, I do not 
from the call. It looks kind of like the cold river, doesn't it? Or is that a, a gem? German Equatorial? It is a German Equatorial. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's a Pierre Schwartz go. Basically, he took a culture mirror and uh, refigured it, and then uh, he, he built the tube himself. Oh, okay. But, Thank you. And I did build an eight inch myself, but uh, it's not in this picture. What's the last thing you said? It, it did build an eight inch, but it's not in the picture. Oh, not in the picture. Okay, great. Well, this is another picture of our workshop. So we have, you know, we have a fair number of things that are useful. This is a regular wood band saw. Uh, this is a milling machine, uh, also a drill. And uh, uh, what do you call it? Band finder. <laughs> Uh, a saw stop table saw so that you won't use things like this <laughs> um, and dust collectors and and so on. And this is the, the uh, tips. Next slide. And another panoramic use. Next slide. And so this is a maxi neck Austrian blade. It's it's quite nice. Uh, it does a nice job, especially after you cleaned it up. Uh, that is a 1944 uh, uh, South Bend uh, eight or nine inch lake. And it works pretty well, but it has a lot of uh, sort of uh, hysteresis. You know, I think it, it's worth it asking for 1,000 things, it takes five, which is not necessarily a good thing. And then this is that machine. Oh, we have a, a band saw for wood, for metal as opposed to wood. Let's see, next slide. And we have a good set of tools. Uh, you don't have to bring them for the most part. Uh, and tools like the uh, routers and, and belt sanders and screwdrivers and so on and so forth. Next slide. And we have got, and we'll let you use, lots of paint. <laughs> uh, that was rescued from the dumpster by uh, a construction worker who's made a telescope for us. And so uh, uh, you have to take the color that they have, but uh, there's a paint store right across the street, and they will re uh, uh, put the color in whatever you like of that stuff. That's nice outfit paint. Really does a nice job. And basically, free, as you can see, we've got. Punches and bits of all kinds of. Next slide. And the saw saw. And we've got actually a pretty good uh, selection of, of uh, books on telescope making. I read the article in this, in the Amateur Scientist. This came out, I think, 1961, uh, when I was just studying junior high school. When I looked at it, I said, nah, this looks too hard. To two countries, <laughs> uh, telescope making techniques have improved dramatically since then. So we've got a, a, quite a good library of all kinds of things. And the woodland, it works pretty well. And yeah. next slide. And all kinds of screws and bolts and nuts and angle irons and all kinds of things and springs and everything else you could use. With the telescope and the luminizer. And the luminizer has a number of stages. Uh, the first stage is a uh, oil based vacuum pump, a uh, mechanical one, and this is a uh, um, second stage, which is uh, again oil based diffusion pump. The professionals don't use any equipment like this, but it, but it works. We get down to well enough. Uh, uh, Pressure to actually do a very, very nice coding job. Next slide. Job is. Oh, and this was the, the old insides of the drive for the field now. Here is the worm uh, um, here for the, I think, right ascension. And getting all this stuff out of there after I'd given up on trying to fix the, uh, the clutch. And the, Clutch. Clutch is in there someplace. Uh, so next next slide. And that's the nice, beautiful buyers here. This is the beautiful buyers here. 
This is simply for uh, the setting circles that we have on the So this is 20 teeth, I think it was, and this has 359 teeth. Next slide. And this is the oral electronics that are in there. And basically, took all of that out. Place it all. Next one. And this is sort of like this. And what we find actually is if this offer, this setup would work great on our workbench. And then we <laughs> put it into the <laughs> And that three to five volt difference uh, would no longer work. From what I understand, a lot of the times the signal is basically because you've got an edge of the square wave that you know is sensed uh by you know basically a little LED here and uh, a light uh detector and we it was really really frustrating and I really do think um so I don't know if we can get that probably yeah I wanted to show it actually working but that's okay never mind it's, it's very easy to go 3.3 to 5 volts. You just use a 74 HCT chip. <laughs> yeah. Is that what you use? Well, so there's a little problem. Uh, uh, we wanted to do this uh, night, and uh, I didn't have one of those just sitting around. So uh, I used the stuff that I had sitting around, which was four kinds of stuff. Yeah. And, and what we have right now is. Uh, I forgot what the ch chip is, but it goes into the places that we were had previously bypassed. And uh, it took, you know, a couple of months for those to come in from China. Not now it was ready. So we've got power supply, we got the, uh, basically the Arduino board. Uh, the Arduino is really on there. This is a uh, uh, Wi-Fi module, it's a real-time clock. And this is the wires to different step of drivers, a little bit like this, but, but different and better. And then the wires go up through those connectors to the rest of the telescope. And I bet I didn't even show the rest of the telescope. Oh, there it is. That thing's big. <laughs> that, that comes up to roughly, I would say, here. So uh, you can't touch the top, and that's without any telescopes on. It's a funny-looking German tutorial. That that's the kind of kind of in that box, which is kind of bizarre. But it can carry a huge amount. I go ahead. Oh, I right, go ahead. Ah, here's me doing the uh, getting the angles correct. Make make straight line. Make a perpendicular using compass and straight edge construction from the uh, and geometry also use the right angles and then bisect those angles so now i've got 45 degrees and then measure very carefully along there how many millimeters that is and divide that by 45 and figure out where 10 and 20 degrees were from there uh, that was more than a little bit of work but not very much fun and it was next slide and another I haven't really used these successfully. Has anybody else done any of this computer aided uh, imaging? Okay, I've tried a little bit and got some results. You see, revolution fusion. The idea is you can just put this into your focuser, uh, get everything set up the way you like it, and it can accumulate uh, pictures as you're watching instead of uh, looking at it uh, after umpteen hours and then process it. So it's almost real time. Huh? Next slide. And uh, <laughs> one thing, not all targets get finished. So the, the more tricky it is, uh, the more chances you have of not finishing it. Dobs are nice because they're simple, just one optical surface. Um, instead of three or four, more surfaces, and they also do composition of the material. Next slide. So our big negatives, okay. Um, anywhere inside any urban area, in fact, for something like 
well, it depends who's counting and how they're counting, but something like 80% of the population of this country can't see the Milky Way if they go outside. Um, <laughs> and that's the next one, right? And then mind pollution. And by that, I mean, next slide, uh, you know, our eyes, no matter how good your eyes are, no matter what kind of a telescope you have, you're never going to see that. Partly because, uh, well, I think I got this from um, on the web. But of course, they're doing all these different wavelengths, right? <laughs> we can't see those. They're all these, you know, RGB, right? Um, 400 to 700 nanometers. And they're going, who knows, way into the infrared. Um, heck, they might have combined this with radio. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> you'll never see any of that stuff. And, and you know, I'm not knocking people like uh, Kevin Quinn and the other incredibly good astrophotographers. Let's look at that one. Uh, yes, I was going to sh show them that. What's the next slide? So this is sort of a, uh, a montage of some of the stuff that Novak members and members have made. And it's incredible <laughs> that, you know, <coughs> 20 years ago, no observatories were doing that. You know, it's, I'm, I'm, we're talking professionals here. It is astonishing. But I think people get the idea, I should be able to see that in night. Yeah. And as we all know, it takes hours of exposure, and you got gigabytes of data <laughs> processing. And uh, then you come up with this, if, if you have all the, wow, that's a lot of money just in equipment, too. I, I've added up the numbers for, for this stuff. It's like $20,000, $30,000. With the equipment, just based on what they list in their their uh, thing on Astro and you know, as you can see, I I don't spend that kind of money. <laughs> Some people do. I think that's it. But thank you very much. Thank Questions? You. Yeah. Hope you guys, great. I mean, I I'm guilty. I mean, I often go right for it. You know, rather than try to buy something, super cool to see. Gets it fast. Super fast. Uh, it's super cool to see the craft and the trade. Um, so thank you so much for bringing your, your stuff in your expertise. So we'll take questions in here, and then we'll go on. One. Hey, not, not a comment. Uh, on a question, a comment about in your telescope. <clears throat> the best thing about ATM is you can build the telescope until I try it on someone else's design. I have a 24 inch telescope, <clears throat> and I was. I couldn't, where I lived, I couldn't have a trailer, you know, to make uh, almost a association with let me have a trailer to put in. So I custom built it to go in a two brew forest that's uh, 16, seven inch. You know, when I pushed in, I opened the window to let the air out. <laughs> and I used for years, um, I also built the, um, I used to travel a lot. And I wanted a, I, I had a 12 inch telescope. Was that the one with the, with the, the arrows? Yeah. Oh, that, that, was, that was brilliant. I, I built I I built it so I could take it when I get went on business trips. And yeah, I could carry the mirror and check and luggage and the other parts in, in a bag. Um, you cannot buy an airline, you can't buy a telescope that you can take on an airline. Um, well, after 9-11, I couldn't do it because they changed the specs of luggage. Yeah. My box wouldn't get it. Yeah, you can, buy, you can do a small refractor. Yeah. But, but nothing like a six-inch or bigger. Yeah. You tell but if you want it, you can make it. But now, how, do, how do folks get to your class? Are you like else about that? Uh, we can take 395. <laughs> <laughs> we mail you a letter we get online. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can um, email me. You can look at Gaius Math Astro. Uh, if that's something you might want to type in. Just Gaius Math Astro dot com. That's the uh, that's my little website. Uh, and uh, or you can look on the uh, the Capital Astronomer. Uh, web page. So that's our. So if you go up there, search on telescope making or, yeah, your.
And so in any case, uh, it's Tuesdays and Fridays, and the hours have changed. It used to be pretty late at night, but uh, because of cutbacks, we're now um, doing one. At, it's from 5 to 7.30, which is not ideal for a lot of people at the time they get there. Uh, it's time to go home. Um, and you can also look at capitalastronomers.org. Yeah, that's another place that has uh, all one word. And if you go down a little bit, um, there's stuff about the uh, little bit further. Yeah, there it goes. Very cool. Any other questions here? Yeah, I'm wondering if your workshop has anybody tried to make eyeglasses? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you bother? <laughs> <laughs> Same reason you bother me. Well, the thing, thing is that for some, some things, the amount of effort versus the return is is uh, is minimal. Okay, for making your own own eyepieces, you could do that, but you have to you would have to have a bunch of little pieces of glass that be just the right composition, or you could buy sets and you could, then you'd have to machine it. So you can certainly buy a blank. It's it's round, but how would you cut it so that it would fit into your perfectly? You know, I mean, they do charge you an arm and a leg at the, at the mm -hmm. opticians. Um, mm -hmm. Even all the chains seem to be owned by this one company. All the brands, you know, seem to be owned by one company. But uh, there are ways of getting around that by just you know, ordering it. But uh, certain things just don't pay off. And people do make their own flats, but again, it's really difficult. And uh, I think that's a place where mass production comes in because they just have this big machine that goes around sort of weird, sort of like uh, reminds me of uh, bumper cars. You all remember bumper cars? <laughs> it's, that's what it's like. And they've got these little pieces of glass that are going around and they can do it for hours. Now, you and I do that. We're going to fall into some sort of bad motion. We're going to put more pressure with our right hand or our left hand. And then you have a screwed up flat. Let, let the machines take care of that. Anybody else questions? We'll go, on, we'll, uh, go online. Anybody have a question for Guy? Super talk. I was glad, glad to finally nail the date and get you here. So <laughs> thank you so much. Guys. Okay. So just remember for go back folks, next month it's two o'clock, <laughs> not seven, in here. And that'll be a fun afternoon as well. And we'll help you clean up your guy. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.